What's going on everyone? Today we're going to go over how to create your very own World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King server from start to finish. This will be running patch version 3.3.5 and we're going to be utilizing the Azeroth Core project. This tutorial is for educational purposes only. Let's go ahead and dig into this here. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the hardware prerequisites. So you're going to want Windows 10 or 11 64-bit or Windows Server 2016, 2019, or 2022. I'll have a link in the description below on how to install or at least install or create a fresh copy of either Windows 10 or 11 if you're not sure how to do that. As for the server hardware specs, I recommend two physical or virtual CPU cores minimum. I personally recommend four to help speed up compiling and all that good stuff. Eight gigabytes of RAM, 80 gigabyte hard drive space. This is for the OS and the binaries on the same drive, along with some breathing room. And then a 100 megabit NIC. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut over to the software prerequisites. So for all these software packages, you can, for the most part, use the latest and greatest version that you can find for them. You'll want 7-zip, git, .NET 6.0, desktop runtime, C++ redistributable runtimes, git extensions, boost, CMake, Notepad++, Heidi SQL, or whichever SQL management application you prefer, but in this video we'll be using Heidi SQL, MySQL version 8, Visual Studio 2022, and OpenSSL 3.0. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it here. So just as the software prerequisite showed off, we're going to go ahead and install everything and I'll go over the links of where I grabbed it and I'll go ahead and have links for everything down below in the description field as well. So I already pre-downloaded everything, but I will also show off the web pages that I've been going to. Went ahead and put numbers for everything here just to go right down the line. So let's go ahead and kick off 7-zip. Let me show it here. So 7-zip, just go to the latest and greatest since we're using a 64-bit OS. Then just go ahead and download that guy and kick it off. So I'll go ahead and install this. Install and close that nice and fast. And then for Git, you can just find the latest and greatest version right here. Click download for Windows and it'll kick it off. So we'll hit next here, next. What we'll do is we'll scroll down here. I like to go ahead and check this guy right here where it says check daily for Git for Windows updates. So we'll do that. It doesn't actually automatically update it, but it will prompt us when there are updates. We'll hit next, next. Next, leave this as is, that looks fine. Basically leave everything as is here, as defaults. Let it install. We don't need to view the release notes, so we'll hit finish. And then we're gonna go ahead and kick off the .NET desktop runtime, which for that, what you wanna do is go down here here it is here, and then just go ahead and select the 64-bit version right there. So we'll kick this off. And close out of that. And then for the C++ redistributable runtime package, there is this very helpful all-in-one package that has every single version 64-bit and 32-bit in it. Just makes it nice and easy. You don't have to hunt them each individual one down. Key thing here is when you go to actually install it to run this bat file, right click it and make sure to do a run as administrator. Otherwise it will prompt you for every single one that you gotta click through. So this just helps automate it. All right. We'll kick off Git extensions, and for Git extensions, I just snagged the latest and greatest version that they show off here, and the one that you want is going to be the MSI file, not the portable version here. So this guy right there, leave this all as is. Don't send telemetry data and install. 
and finish. Next, we're going to go ahead and kick off boost, which for boost, this has pre-compiled libraries already good to go. So this makes it nice and easy. So you just go ahead and download the latest and greatest version that is here. So we'll kick this off, leave this as is, hit next. This will take a long time, so just let it do its thing and be patient. All right, we'll go ahead and hit finish. Keep moving on here, so we're going to move on to CMake. So for CMake, I don't touch the release candidates. I go for the latest release version, and then I just go ahead and pull from the Windows 64-bit installer, that guy right there. So we'll kick this off. I do like to go ahead and create a desktop icon. That way it's easier to hunt it down, leave everything else as is, hit next and install and finish. And then moving on, we'll go ahead and install Notepad++. Notepad++ is optional, but it just makes dealing with the configuration files much, much easier. So I agree, next, I'll leave that all as is. Install, we're gonna go ahead and run it just because I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust a preference real quick here. Settings, preferences, and this is just setting it to dark mode because it's easier on my eyes. And then we'll close out of that. So moving on here, so we'll go to Heidi SQL. Install for all users. Accept the agreement, leave that as is, next. The only thing we're going to uncheck here is not report client data back to them. Hit install. And then we don't have to launch it at this moment. And then let's go ahead and kick off MySQL. And we're going to go ahead and kick off the version 8. So we're going to go ahead and check server only. Hit next. Execute. Show details to make it entertaining. And next. Next again. Drop this down to server computer again. We can leave everything else as is here. We'll hit next. We'll go ahead and leave it at the recommended state here. So we'll hit next. For the root password, just go ahead and put in something that you'll be able to memorize here, as we'll need this later on. I just put some nonsense in there just to make it easy. Now, one thing to also mention here is that we're going to go ahead and just use the default my MySQL user account that will be built out. Now, if you want something more secure and you want to really harden your, your server and database and all that good stuff, this would be your opportunity to go ahead and click add user and you can go ahead and build out the role for it. Now, since I'm not actually going over any of the hardening of the server or anything like that, I'll leave it up to you to go ahead and figure all that stuff out. So we'll go ahead and click next. Next again, next, and execute, and finish. And then we'll click next, and finish again. And then let's keep moving on here. So Visual Studio, one thing I forgot is I didn't actually show the MySQL portion here. So what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna click on, I'll, I'll have the proper link down below here, but we would just click on this here, go to download page, and then just go ahead and download the full, full installer here, which would be this guy, the larger file. Anyhow, as for Visual Studio 2022, you'd go ahead and click here and then click download the Community 2022 version. So we'll go ahead and kick that off, continue. And then what we want to do is we want to scroll down here and select desktop development with C++. Go ahead and check that. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as is here. Now, some people can actually come in here and nitpick the things that aren't needed. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it all as is. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop this down to download all and then install just because I've seen weird things happen if I don't do this. So we'll go ahead and click install. And also one thing to mention is that Visual Studio does have a fair amount of uh, storage footprint here. So click install and this will take a while. So just be patient.
All right, so let's go ahead and do skip this for now. You can go ahead and sign in if you really want to. Choose whatever color theme you want. We'll go ahead and start Visual Studio. And then what we're going to do just to kind of finish Visual Studio's installation per se, we're going to do continue without code. Let me go ahead and click out of this. The bottom says it's all ready. There's no scribbles happening on that little piece of paper there. So now we can do file exit. We can go ahead and close out of this also. And let's go back and then let's go ahead and kick off the OpenSSL installer here. For OpenSSL, we'll go ahead and go to this site here. And then if you scroll down, then you just go ahead and download the version that is not a light version. So in this case, it'd be this guy. And then I went ahead and downloaded the MSI, but you could download the executable as well. But anyhow, we'll go ahead and move forward here. Leave that as is. That's fine. And then we'll check the open SSL binaries and the bin directory. So we'll hit next, install, and then certainly feel free to donate to them. But we'll go ahead and uncheck that for now and hit finish. And then let's go back and see what we've got left. All right, so at this point, we can go ahead and close out of some stuff here. And we have to move on to adjusting some environmental variables. So one way to get to your environmental variables is if you have this PC on your desktop, just go ahead and right click on it, go to properties, and then you would go to the advanced system settings, and then you can do environmental variables. If you don't have this PC on your desktop, just go ahead and click on the gear for settings, system, about, and then advanced system settings, environmental variables. And now what we need to do is we need to add a variable down here. So we're going to go ahead and click on new. Key thing is this one for system variables, not the user variable variables for users. So click new. And then I'm going to, I will have this down in the description, but we need to build out a variable name for boost root. Let me get rid of all these spaces. Make sure there's no space in the beginning there. It looks good. And then for the value, it would be the version of boost. If the newer version of boost is out, then just double check this location that you've got and just change up the numbers here. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Next, we need to make a modification to the path. And then we're going to click on edit. And then I click in here so it's not highlighting anything and we click new. And then we're adding in a MySQL path here. Just make sure there's no spaces in the front. That looks good. You click out of it so it's not highlight anymore. Hit OK. OK again. Go ahead and hit OK to get out of this. Close out of this. We can close this for now. And then at this point, what we want to do is we actually want to reboot the computer server so that everything's fresh. And it also makes it so that all the variables that we just adjusted are all going to actually be in sync. So anyhow, we will continue on once the machine has been rebooted. All right, now that the machine or server is back up, what we're going to do is we are going to start the process of pulling down the binary files and all that good stuff from Git. So let's go ahead and open Windows Explorer here. I'm going to click on this PC, go to C drive, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click in here, go to new folder. We're going to call it Azeroth Core. Then we're going to go ahead and right click on it. We're going to go to git extension clone, aka the git ext clone. Select your language. I'm going to uncheck this so it doesn't pop up all every time we launch it. Hit apply and OK. All right, so for this section, I'll have this down in the description below, but we are going to paste this in. So this is the Git repository for the source data that we're going to pull down. For the subdirectory, we're going to actually going to blank this out. And then here, we're going to click and select master. Leave everything else as is and click clone. And then just be patient as it pulls all the data down. All right, so it is done. So we'll click OK. Now let's go ahead and create a new folder in the C drive. So we'll click new folder and we're going to call it build. 
Now we're going to go ahead and kick off CMake. And so for where the source code is located, let's browse to the Azeroth core folder. Azeroth core, select folder. And then where to build the binaries, let's browse to the build folder. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click configure. I'm going to leave this all as default, which basically means it's going to build it out as a 64-bit environment. So we'll hit finish. Give this a little bit of time. All right, so the key thing here is everything actually looks good. There's no issues with it finding boost. This is always the point of failure here, but basically if you followed everything I did, then you shouldn't see any errors here. So this is red, so we need to click configure one more time, but this does give you the opportunity to kind of go in and customize some stuff. I'm not going to go through and actually check anything else here. Um, one section that you may change is the tools build here. You could change this to all, but since we are going to actually use already extracted uh, map data, we're not going to go ahead and use this. So anyhow, so we'll click configure again. It's not red anymore, so now we can move on to clicking generate. And then we can do open project, which will open it in Visual Studio. Click Visual Studio. I'll also check this guy here so it doesn't prompt again. Hit OK. And then just be patient as it loads up everything. All right. So up here, we're going to change debug down to rel with deb info, which basically stands for release with debug info. So we'll click that. We're going to leave it as the 64-bit environment here. However, I'm going to wait until the scribbling is done down there before we move forward. So we'll give this a moment and just be patient. All right, now the system is settled. Let's go ahead and right-click on All Build, and then we're going to select Clean. And then we'll wait for this to do what it's going to do here. All right, so that finished. Now we can go ahead and right-click All Build and select Build. And this is going to take fair amount of time. So at this point, I would say give it at least 30 minutes and then check back. We will continue on once it is done. All right, so now that things are compiled, we'll go ahead and just take a look here. So this is what we want to see. Key thing is that nothing has failed. We can go ahead and close out of Visual Studio and we can close out of CMake. Now we can go into the build folder under bin rel with deb info. And so here's everything currently. So what we need to do, we need to move some dependency DLLs into here. So first we need a file from MySQL. So let's go ahead and go in here and it should be under program files, MySQL, MySQL server 8.0, lib for library. And we need a lib mysql.dll. This guy right here, we'll go ahead and copy it. Toss it in here. And then next, what we need to do is we need to move some open SSL files into here. So let's go back to program files, open SSL, bin. We need the legacy.dll. And we also need the lib crypto-3-x64 dash dash DLL, so we'll copy these. By the way, if you don't see file extensions and whatnot, then just go up to view, and we'll go ahead and just check these here, file name extensions and hidden items. And then we're gonna paste these in. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to right click, go to new folder, and we're gonna call it data. And what we need to do is we need to download the map data since we're not using the extractors so you'd go to this website here which i'll have down in the description go ahead and download the data.zip and then just go ahead and extract that into the data folder here since i've already got them i will go ahead and just copy and paste and so there's the cameras the dbc the maps the m maps and the v maps so we'll paste those in here this could take a little bit all right, now that those are copied over, I'm just going to close some things here. So now what we need to do is go back to the rel with deb info folder. Let's go ahead and open up the config section. What we're going to do is we're going to right click in here, go to new folder. We're going to create backup and I'm just going to copy these into here. 
And then the first thing we're going to do is we are going to remove the dot dist on the end of these. Now let's go ahead and open this one here. We're going to edit it with Notepad++. And just to show you, we're going to go down to line 222. So if you did make another MySQL user, then to basically harden the server, you could go ahead and change it in this section here. First one would be the username. Second one would be the password. Just wanted to show that tidbit and I'll show it also on the other one here. So we'll open up the world server. So if we scroll down to 109, 109, 110, and 111, the same thing. First one is the username. Second one is the password, so you can change it here. Now, while we are in here, let's go ahead and go to line 72, this data directory. What we need to do is we need to copy this path for the data where the maps and stuff are. So we'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll just go ahead and get rid of the period paste it in so that it's within the quotations here. Let's go ahead and save it. And now we can go ahead and close out of Notepad++. Go back here. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and fire up MySQL. Click on New. And then whatever you set the root password to, go ahead and type it in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on Query. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up this guy here, which of course I'll have the link down the description field. But if we click into this, there's going to be this to run in there. So what we can do is we can actually click this copy raw content section here. We can just go ahead and paste it right in here. And then we'll just go ahead and execute it using this button here. Not worried about the warning there, but that effectively created the A core user. And so if we go into tools, user manager, a core now exists here with these permissions. So we'll go ahead and minimize Heidi SQL for now, close out of this. And now let's go ahead and start the process of getting the database to initiate here. So we're going to go ahead and double click on auth server.exe, double click on that. If you get the firewall pop up, just go ahead and check that, allow access. And so it created some portions of the database that are needed for the authentication server. Now we'll go ahead and double click on the world server.exe. And now it's going to start building the world server databases. Could hang every so often. So if you're questioning what it's doing, you can always right click here on the taskbar, go to task manager, and you can kind of just watch to see what's happening. So this is going to take a few minutes. So just be patient, let it do its thing. All right. So once the world server has fully created the databases, then it goes through and actually starts prepping the world and whatnot. So you get the firewall pop up here. So again, we'll just check that, allow access. And so at this point, the server is actually fully functional right now. But if you want to go in and customize like the realm name and time zone, all that good stuff, if it's PVP, all that good stuff, I'm going to go ahead and show you. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to actually show you how to shut down the world server and the auth server. The world server, I like to type in server shutdown one, one being seconds. So you can actually type in the amount of seconds here. And it, if someone is actually in the game, it will alert them with the pop up and the, uh, the chat channel saying server going down an X period of time. So we'll hit enter. Since it was only one second, it kicked off and shut itself off. For the auth server, we will do control C, close out of that. So those are the graceful ways of shutting it down so that you're not potentially corrupting anything as there could be read and writes happening to the database. So that's the happy way of shutting it down. Anyhow, let's go back to Heidi SQL. I want to go ahead and hit F5 to refresh it since we actually have more databases in here. Here's the databases that were all created. In order to adjust the stuff I was mentioning about the time zone and the realm name and all that good stuff, I'm going to go to A Core Auth, click on the realm list table. And I'm actually going to go ahead and double click on this query here and we're going to hit we're going to uncheck this and then we're going to hit no. That way we don't accidentally run that again. 
So we click on the data tab, and so here it all is here. So by default, Azeroth Core is the realm that would be listed for the game client, and then a few things you can adjust here. I will leave a link in the description that goes over all the time zones, all the flags, all the icons. The key thing that I'm just going to do is I'm just going to change the name to show it, and we're also going to set the address to be the IP address of the server here. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and just double click in here, hit backspace or delete, and we are going to name this peanut butter. Peanut butter for the fantastic peanut butter cookie recipe that I'm going to link down below. It's a very simple recipe. It's only three ingredients, but it is, it is delicious. Anyhow, moving on. So for the address section here, we want the IP address of the server itself. So let's do start. Type in CMD for command prompt, hit enter, IP config, enter. Here's the IP address. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it right in there, span that out. That's fine. So those, those are the only things we're actually going to change in here. But like I said, you can feel free to customize these three sections here. Now, we can close out a command prompt, move some stuff around here. So yeah, so always when you start the server, you want to start auth server first. As you see here, realm name is now peanut butter. And then let's go ahead and start the world server. Thankfully, it doesn't take as long as that first time to populate all the databases and whatnot. Should be 20, 30, 40 seconds, 32 seconds. Everything now is up and running. And so I just want to go over two things. The server as is doesn't have any accounts on it. So if you want to start creating accounts to actually be able to log in, then all you have to do is type in account, create, and then the account's name. So we can just do test and then followed by what its password would be. I'm just going to type in test and hit enter. And then it says account created test. So that means that that account is now live. When you create an account, it actually creates it as a base vanilla WoW account. You'll have a level 60 level cap. You will also, you know, not be able to go to Outland or uh, Northrend. And so we effectively have to make the account have the expansions activated on it to activate Burning Crusade content and Wrath of Lich King content, we're going to bring it up to two. So it starts at zero. Burning Crusade would be the number one. Wrath of Lich King is the number two. So we do count set add on test for the account name and the number two. Hit enter. And so as you see here, count test the ID of the account. Have up to two expansions allowed now. It now has all the way up to Wrath of Lich King content now enabled. So at this point, I leave it up to you to get the client to play the game. As for the other commands to use within the game for setting GM levels and all that good stuff, you can find some of the stuff in the link that I'll have down below that'll give some general information. I'll be following up this video with a how-to guide on keeping it up to date with the latest commits. If you did find this video to be useful, please like it. And if you want to continue to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I plan to have a Cataclysm how-to guide coming up next, and then I'll be moving on to other game servers and whatnot. Definitely follow along over the next few weeks here. So anyhow, take it easy.